it's how those at the receiving end of these posts must understand that nobody's life is perfect and that all these posts that we see from celebrities and people with an IQ of less than 50 being paid loads of money for advertising some toothpaste whitening cream whilst on a beach with perfect skin it's not real but try and convincing a 13 14 year old that it's hard hello and welcome to a doctor's view a podcast looking at everyday health topics and life through a doctor's eyes please note that all opinions are my own and should not replace the advice given to you by your own doctor i'm dr bolivios let's begin Hello everyone and welcome to Doctor's View. This week I'm going to be discussing social media and its effect on mental health with mainly respect to depression. I chose to talk about this topic because since starting this podcast I found that the episodes which achieved the most downloads and the most uh, listens were the ones that were shared on social media and I found this quite an interesting phenomenon. It makes sense of course but I wanted to explore the social media obsession we have as a society a bit more. So social media is all around us. We we can't escape it. Wherever we go we're always seeing people on our phones or we're always using our phones. Uh, we're using various sites. There's a numerous amount uh, of different social media, social networking sites around. We've got Facebook, we've got Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat and so forth. Now there have been a number of news articles over the years that have used the headline of social media causes depression, mainly amongst adolescents and teenagers. And for the most part, this was unchallenged because it made perfect sense. And to some extent, it it still does. You have a group of kids essentially listening to uh, or or viewing all these images um, of, of various lifestyles and it stops them from interacting with people. They'd rather spend more time in front of their computer screens. And subsequently, you don't lead the most healthy life. You don't have the most social interaction on a face-to-face basis. You have it on a screen-to-screen basis. And this, it makes sense. That can lead to a bit of loneliness, can lead to depression. I remember when Facebook began, and for me, it started when I was at medical school and I, I received an MSM messenger for those uh who are old enough to remember the MSM Messenger days, uh, from a friend and asking if I was on Facebook. I actually had no idea what this was. Um, so I, I googled it and found that found the site and discovered that my university wasn't actually included in the Facebook network. I couldn't sign up to Facebook. When, when Facebook first started, it was only open to a select group of universities Uh, so it started off in Harvard in America and then it um, it filtered its way down and when it came to the UK it was only some very very prestigious universities that were were included it was only later on that they started to include more and more Um, so a few months went by and I, I checked again and then my I found that my university had made the list and I was open to this magical portal essentially that showed you the lives of others almost instantaneously making sites like Bebo and MySpace just completely obsolete it was it was something completely different you used to get so excited for getting a friend request or or if someone that you liked uh, accepted your friend request and it was it was uh, the equivalent of when the internet first started, when email started becoming popular and, and you received an, an email, it was it was exciting to some extent. And that was that was kind of how social media for, for me at least was. Um and and I think for many others, you it was it was actually a bit ridiculous. You could do stupid things. There was these virtual games, you could um throw virtual objects at people if if anyone remembers the Facebook early days. And then since then there have been more sites that have come to the party thing, sites like Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and obviously Facebook itself has has evolved. And here's the thing. There have been a number of studies that have shown that increasing use of social media sites correlate very strongly to depressive symptoms. And as I said before, this makes sense, and we'll touch a bit on that later on as well. However, 
there's since been a recent study that looked into the long-term effect of these social media sites and depression. And this study, they took over 1,100 undergraduate students and they surveyed them each year for six years. And the results showed that social media use did not predict the depressive symptoms over time for both males or females. It did, however, show that greater depressive symptoms predicted more frequent social media use later on amongst adolescent girls only. So the assumption that we all had may not actually be justified as much as we once thought. And the study led the author to suggest that these adolescent females who are feeling depressed may be using social media to make themselves feel better. And that's something that I think hasn't really been explored very much. So this lends itself to the question with regards to other studies that um, that suggests that the greater time spent on social media shows there's a greater link with depression. Now, does that mean that is, the, is it that spending more time on this site caused the depression? Or is it the fact that if you have depression, you're more likely to spend more time on these sites? Do you see what I mean? Is it the fact that you are depressed that makes you want to spend more time on these sites? And this is where the episode becomes a bit more anecdotal. I, I won't simply focus on, uh, discuss my view on this matter. And, you know, I believe that regardless of whether or not teenagers grow out of depression, um, these depressive symptoms and subsequently use social media less, fair enough. I do believe there is an element of danger for those who are more susceptible to depression or who are feeling down. And what I mean by that is, even though there might be studies showing that the long-term effect of social media is not uh, linked with an increase in depressive symptoms, I believe that the short-term implications for some vulnerable uh, people, especially vulnerable teenagers, can be quite profound. And to get an understanding into what I mean, when I was at medical school, I had to give a presentation of sociological personalities and mental health conditions. And I mentioned a few of them. And then one of my slides had the word narcissism. And underneath, it was a definition. And it was the only slide I didn't write any words for the definition. I simply put the Facebook logo. And everyone knew exactly what the definition of narcissism was without me having to write a word. And the reason I did this is because the problem with social media is it portrays the life that we want everyone to see. It's not necessarily the life that we are living. And of course, you might think this is, this is obvious. And why is this a problem? We all know this. Well, we can become obsessed with our next selfie. It might even make us want to go to places, not because we want to be there, but simply because we want to check in there and post a picture showing everyone what a fascinating life we lead. We also have to understand that we as adults, as we've grown up, we've we've learned that life is not like that. A younger child or, or a teenager doesn't have that level of appreciation yet. They don't realize that this life of, uh, that has been portrayed isn't actually what everyone is living. They haven't experienced the the minutiae of life yet to understand that this is not uh, this is not a normal thing, and so they think that everyone has this life, and and then they question why don't they have this life, and then they become upset by it. And whilst yes, there are studies that that go to contrary against this, I think in the real world, short term, this can have big problems for like I say, people who are a bit more vulnerable people who are feeling down, people who are, say, let's take a, an everyday world example, one which definitely affected me when I was growing up. Say someone has, uh, has growing up adolescent, has quite bad acne. And all the time, every time they log onto their computer, every time they, they open up their web browser, they would see these lovely photos of um, of all these people in nice poses, wearing nice clothes, with lovely skin. It's, yeah, there's nothing wrong with those photos, but it may not be the reality. And it makes them feel 
so more self-conscious. It's definitely made me feel more self-conscious. Okay, I, you know, we all grow out of that, or or we usually grow out of it, but it can lead to quite self-destructive mechanism in the short term, and even in in adult life. You know, it this incredible life that we believe everyone to have. Um, it only takes a few few minutes being on Instagram to think that everyone in the world is on holiday with the ubiquitous beach photo and the selfie with their partner and it seems that you're the only one in existence who isn't drinking a cocktail or holding a newborn baby or or you know what something like this this isn't everyday life it's selective now narcissism is the pursuit of gratification from vanity or egotistic admiration from one's own self-image and the term actually originates from Greek mythology where the young um, Narcissus fell in love with his own image reflected in a pool of water and when these things are posted we we crave likes we crave the comments we crave the reactions it's let's put it this way imagine big brother uh, mainly for those in the UK who 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 know of this program um kind of been taken over by Love Island now but you know um, imagine that the people in there and think what the reaction they would have if they went through the entire set the all the motions all those weeks in the house having their every move studied with cameras and and um, thinking outside that they are being viewed by millions and millions of people and all this and then on the last day they come out to the house and there's no one there they realize that nothing has been filmed there's been no newspaper articles the whole thing was just one big experiment can you imagine their reaction how gutted they would be and that is in my view it's a form of narcissism and we're all guilty of it and as am i and there's nothing unhealthy about it in moderation we should all love ourselves we all want to show off a little bit every now and then fair enough why do i bring this up well if you're feeling a bit low and you're having a bad week, your relationship isn't going well, it's raining outside, you've had a bad outbreak of acne, all of a sudden you open an app, you see everyone around us showing this incredible life, heavily filtered photos, sunny beaches, with friends, and seemingly living a life that wouldn't look out of place in a Hello magazine. It's not going to do much for your mental health. And so what I'd like to say is just take this all with a, a pinch of salt. Yes, it's lo- it's lovely to be able to um, share these these nice moments with people. Uh, millions of people do every day. But it's also really hard to not be affected by them in some way. It, it, it's hard. You know, some people are better at it than others. They just like it or ignore it or in some cases unfollow someone or unfriend someone. But everyone has their own way of dealing with it. But just think if you are, as I said earlier, um, a young, impressionable um, uh, teenager who's going through a lot of difficulties that life throws at you and you're, you're dealt with this, uh, these constant things all the time, it, it doesn't bode well for, for a healthy, um, healthy relationship with, with society. And also, it can, it can cause envy quite a lot um whether you're religious or not i I do believe in in the seven deadly sins and uh, envy is definitely uh, one that invicts a lot of problems in the world um both for our for ourselves and for everyone around us and whilst it's classified as a sin to be envious i also think it's can be quite cruel to just make other people jealous and make other people have envy as well. Um, case in point would be if uh, I don't know you've just had a breakup and you um, constantly post photos of of your new life just to spite the other person. It can be unfair, and again, doesn't bode well for short term mental health problems. Now, I'm in no way knocking anyone who does post things on Facebook or Twitter or or, or um, Instagram and holiday photos. I'm guilty of it too and as I said we're all a little bit narcissistic we all like being told that we look nice in a photo that we have and we all gain some want some form of approval from society for our activities but it's how those at the receiving end of these posts must understand that nobody's life is perfect and that all these posts that we see from celebrities and people with an IQ of less than 50 being paid loads of money for advertising some 
toothpaste whitening cream whilst on a beach with perfect skin it's not real but try and convincing a 13 14 year old to that it's hard and that's that's something which i think needs to be addressed a bit more yeah as i said lot and, and as, as that study said long term use maybe not haven't have much for a correlation with depression but i think in the short term i think it can lead to it leads to kids being quite miserable and also um, the more time you spend in front of a screen less time you're going to spend in front talking to people and talking to people is good you know I love my job not just because I love the actual job itself but I get to talk to patients every day and relatives every day yeah sometimes it can be difficult in terms of the interaction you have with them but it's that um, range of emotions that you get and, and range of conversations that you get. I've, I've met some fascinating, fascinating patients uh, who have done, done some ex- work in extraordinary fields and have done some amazing things in their life coming in for various things and, and just chatting to them and, and listening to their stories. Even um, some old age pensioners come in with some uh, old war stories that they tell. It's, it's incredible, incredible to hear some of these things. And it's that interaction which I love and 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 I think it's starting to lack in in modern day society now. So there's that. I think I've said enough about um, the depression side of of social media and and that. But what I wanted to touch on is that there's an even darker side to social media, uh, a far cry away from the it's making us depressed or it's making kids depressed. The darker side I'm talking about is the posts that actually have the ability to cause direct harm to the vulnerable. I'll elaborate. So there's been posts recently, um, it's been in the news actually a couple of months ago. There's There was a, a detox tea which was being advertised throughout Instagram or throughout uh, some social media sites. And what it was was essentially laxatives in disguise of of a of a tea, and it was being endorsed by uh, what were called the, the, the um, Instagram or social media influencers, people that were being paid to uh, promote this this tea. And what it is in disguise is is something for thin inspiration. And for those of you that don't know, thin inspiration is. Um, it's a site or a photo or, or some form of, of uh, media that encourages or promotes uh, anorexia or an eating disorder like bulimia. And it was used by so many of these um, uh, teenagers to uh, a, a, as a way of losing weight because it was a laxative. Now, they couldn't obviously advertise it as a, um, as a laxative, but it was a cleansing tea, a, a detox tea. And this is very lucrative and it is very dangerous. And in some cases, it can cause huge, huge harm. And these are promoted by influencers to have millions and millions of followers. And that's some of the darker side of social media. Also, going back to a um, podcast I did with uh, where I interviewed... Um, a lovely lady who had suffered from body dysmorphic disorder. Just thinking about it, if if you are suffering from a condition like that, where you're constantly self aware of your own your own appearance, you're constantly critical of your own appearance, and you are struggling with um with your with with confidence, and you're constantly insecure, seeing photos day in day out of um, celebrity influencers uh, showing um, just unhealthily thin bodies or incredibly unrealistic looking skin you know, this is going to impact you quite a lot things that are good you know twitter for example that obviously has has controversy um it's, it's been the subject of um, many many abusive posts or, or or many insulting posts rather and you know that can again that can be that can be detrimental you've obviously got to be a very thick-skinned individual to 
allow yourself to be open up to a social media platform to allow anyone and everyone to write whatever they want i mean that that's uh you've got to take the good with the bad um now that's not condoning behavior that is going to be you know that is just rude and just is vile however there is some good things with it you can promote wonderful things with twitter or or even just other social media sites you can you can share um fundraising things you can you can promote um tools that help people learn you can you can promote lectures uh you can share wisdom and impart knowledge uh, and to all your followers there are people that you want to know um you know, if you're following your favorite sportsman or hero, for example, people that you actually aspire to, um, whose posts aren't influenced by advertising products, but their posts are actually using social media to give fans a greater insight into the behind the scenes of what they do. I mean, that's lovely. You know, I, I follow a few Formula One drivers, for example, and it's lovely to see them in the garage doing their their testing or or reading the telemetry or just all these little things that for a fan of, of motor racing is is lovely and. I very much appreciate it. My final thoughts um, to summarise this quite rambly um, podcast on on social media is social media can be a very lovely and good tool and I'm glad it exists. However, uh, don't let... So um, don't let virtual friendships take over from actual friendships. Go out, meet people, do things. You know, it's, it's much better if 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 you're seeing people go out and fly a kite on social media go out and do it yourself it's it's more fun than watching a post or commenting on it you know and also don't be taken to to a back by all the all the lovely posts you see it's lovely to share it's lovely to know what uh, your friends are doing and and to compliment them where where appropriate but don't think that everyone's life is perfect no one's life is perfect it's impossible and With that, I will leave you. So as always, if you do have any questions, please do email me. If you have any topics you'd like to uh, have discussed on the show, please do send me them and I'll do my very best to research them and give my own thoughts on them. Equally, uh, please do subscribe. Um, I have a Twitter account, as uh, I think is appropriate to mention on this episode. Um, I'm also on Instagram, so please do check me out under Dr. Bolivios. And as always, please take care of yourselves, and I will join you again next time. I'm Dr. Bolivios. Goodbye.